welcome. Hi, everyone. So, as Rachel said, my name is Natalie, and I'm a junior here at Found Valley High School. And I've been doing spoken word poetry for a few years now, but it's only been at local coffee shops, some open mic nights. So, obviously, I'm really excited to be giving this TED Talk. So, I'd like to start off with a spoken word poem that I wrote specifically for tonight. So, the first thing that came to mind when I was asked to do this talk was ideas worth spreading. So I evaluated my skills and spread them out on the tabletop of my creativity like a roadmap, drawing lines from experience A to hurt B to heartbreak C to embarrassment D to wisdom E, and realized that my skills included falling for people I couldn't have and eating four times the suggestive serving size. I drew inspiration from a car that had long, that had long run empty. There was a green light, but we moved to nowhere, and weeks went by like but like the next boyfriend, time never changed its ways, no matter how many times I prayed for the moon to become too restless to go down, for the sun to become too hungover to come up again. Time, heartless bitch that she was, remained as patient and as constant as ever, and security was just an illusion, a wave that lapsed on the shore of my procrastination. It was a Thursday night when I received your Skype call. I confessed that this talk had run its course and had come up empty, that my creativity had simply run dry, to which you called me selfish. You told me I was being handed opportunity on a silver platter but was too busy staring at my own reflection in the metal. You called me a coward. And being my sister, we did come from the same set of fallopian tubes, but that is the most basic definition to describe the bond that we have. A bond etched not only in the blood of my veins, but that has been tattooed into the scope of my fondest memories, into the hallways of my home, and into the face I see when I look in the mirror. And even though there were 2,796 miles and a computer screen separating us, being called a coward by the person you love most in this world didn't hurt any less because your words were all too reminiscent of the masters of those sullen mornings when simply waking up and pulling off the covers becomes too daunting a task because insecurity weighs down on your heart like a heavy load. When you look in the mirror, instead of being grateful for the legs that carried you there, all you can see is the acne and the imperfection, the crooked teeth and mediocre complexion. And all I saw when I looked at the list of my fellow speakers was PhD, MD, CEO, goals that my 16 years had not yet grown tall enough to reach. But tonight, I'm hoping my poetry will take me closer to getting there. Oh, it's done. <laughs> analogy by myself but you know a lot of people say that writing spoken word poetry is a lot like pooping <laughs> I mean okay sometimes it's pretty quick and short as in, <laughs> but then other times it can be rather long and painful <laughs> um, but really everybody's ha everybody has it in them really, any anybody can do it and when it comes to spoken word poetry I often find myself going through the second one, and the creative process usually goes a little bit like this. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's basically how I feel on a daily basis. <laughs> Boom, all right. Um, so what spoken word poetry is, it's basically performance poetry. A poem that, okay, you can write it down in a notebook, you can type it up on your laptop, but it has to be acted out. It jumps off the page. It has to be recited and performed and heard by people. And the best example I would have for this is whenever I write a new poem, my sister, she always asks me to send it to her so she can read it and edit it and give me feedback. But I always kind of feel a little uncomfortable doing this, not because I don't want her to read my poetry or because I don't want to send it to her, just that I know for a fact that when she reads it, she won't get the rhythm of it, the flow, the cadence, the same way that she would if I were to just personally recite it to her which is a huge part of the overall experience of it. It's the delivery, it's the way you say it, it's what you put into it. You know, I already mentioned my sister a lot, and she was actually the person who introduced me to spoken word poetry. It was about two years ago, one night in my freshman year, she was up pretty late on YouTube, watching all these videos of all these spoken word poets, and she was like, dude, Nat, you have to come over here, you have to see this. I was like, okay, so I did, and I came, and I was instantly hooked because what I like so much about spoken word poetry is that there aren't really any rules for it. You know, my English class at the time was driving me crazy because we were learning about three-pronged three -pronged thesis statements and body paragraphs and conclusions and transition sentences. And honestly, it made me want to throw up in my mouth. It was driving me <laughs> absolutely crazy. And what's awesome about spoken word poetry is that there's so much freedom to tell whatever kind of story that you choose. And it's personal. It can be quirky, emotional, funny, angry, sad. It can really be anything that you choose. But 
What my sister also taught me when I learned throughout the years is basically that spoken word poetry, it, it's always changing. What it means to you is always evolving. You know, this past summer she moved to New York for college and she hasn't failed to tell me how amazing the poetry scene is there, you know, how many hip and cool poetry bars she went to. And something that really struck me that she told me was that, you know, at these bars is before reciting any poetry, the host never fails to come up on stage and he goes up there and says, hey, you know, this is a safe place, this is a safe environment. Everybody here has the right to be respected, everyone here has the right to be heard, and everyone here has the right to share their story however they want to. And I feel that that's so important because I hope that we've already established that this room is a safe place for anyone to speak however they want to. And this fostering this connection, this, this being comfortable with both the poet and the audience, it helps make this connection to whatever story you're trying to share. And after I perform a poem, it's always nice when people come up to me and say, hey, you know, Natalie, I think you did a really good job, but it's taken to a whole new level when people come up to me and say, hey, Natalie, I really liked that poem. You know, it's taken to a whole new level where instead of just coming up to me and saying, hey, good job, they're basically saying, hey, I really felt what you shared there. I really, I appreciate your story. I appreciate you sharing your feelings with me. And we share our stories through it. Like, we share our stories and experiences and I hate going through experiences with having nothing to show for it. I think that's why writers and artists and poets and all these peoples are seen as these um, tortured soul types because so much of what they do is so personal and relevant to them. Because when you're always in tune with your feelings and revealing a large portion of them on such a public scale, you know, you're you're in tune to you you're in tune to care about things. You see how these things affect you. And I wish I was cool, you know, I wish I didn't care, but I care a lot. So I can see why you know these kinds of thoughts and these kinds of worries can lead someone to start drinking wine out of a coffee mug at two o'clock in the afternoon, watching reruns of the Kardashians. You know these are pressing issues, and you go to things that make you comfortable. But a big problem that I had with my poetry, and even while I was writing this talk, was I started wasting too much time thinking, "Oh, what's the best way that I can say this? What's the best way that I can express my feelings and sound the coolest, or that will impress the most people?" And I realized that your poetry, it sounds a lot better when you literally say how you feel in the most personal and authentic manner that you can. I'm still learning how to not waste my time with wondering what's the best way I can express my feelings instead of simply acknowledging my feelings, acknowledge that they're there and say them openly and honestly because your poetry becomes yours when it's personal, when it sounds like you. People don't want to hear things they've already heard before. Writing spoken word poetry, it should become, it should be something you enjoy. It shouldn't be a labor of words, and, but before I had this epiphany, I found myself acting sesquipedalian, and sesquipedalian was the dictionary word of the month in September 2011, and it just means having a tendency to use super long words and phrases, and I was going through my notebook, and I found one of the first poems I had ever written, and it was written in this kind of heat of teenage angst and passion and anger, and go figures, it was written about a boy. So I actually wrote the page out of my notebook, and I'm gonna read it to you guys right now. All right. Your cold shoulder rendered me with a frostbite that pierced my heart in its innermost ventricular regions. The tears which have sprung forth from these wells of my eyes have formed the found foundations of this horribly closed-minded abyss of lameness. You cretin. <laughs> and I'm really grateful that my poetry has evolved since then, because honestly, that was kind of a piece of crap. It was literally a piece of poop. Like, that was really bad. So just to tie this all together and to finish with you guys, I want to end by reciting a poem that I recently wrote as well, and it's about my stutter. So. Just imagine for a second how quiet this world would be if no one could talk. To speak, it's the simplest form of communication there is. Instead of having to kick you in the balls, I can simply tell you that I hate you. Instead of finding you a new outfit to wear, I can simply tell you that the dress you're wearing does indeed make you look fat. <laughs> or better yet, instead of holding your hand until both our palms are drenched in sweat, I can simply tell you that I love you and mean it. I like to imagine every word I want to say as a soldier crawling up from my vocal cords and marching all the way up my throat and out of my mouth, but having a stutter feels like bombs are constantly being hurled at the battlefield of my verbal expression, not allowing these brave fighters to come out. And I read somewhere that stuttering has something to do with genetics. It has something to do with some glitch in your brain. 
but I'd like to know how my two brothers have outgrown their stutter, and I still haven't, and it's hard to explain what this feels like to other people, to explain why I can sing but I can't talk, why the normal everyday conversations are sometimes harder than, say, reciting a poem, why my stutter gets worse when you put a phone to my ear, and even now I'm praying that I don't screw this up. And it's hard to explain how the sweat drips down your neck when the barista at Starbucks asks for your name. Or when you go to Subway and you can't exactly express how you want it your way, so you nudge your brother to tell the cashier that you want lettuce, tomatoes, onion, and honey mustard, damn it. <laughs> or when you're at a restaurant and you don't want to embarrass yourself, so you order what you can say instead of what you actually want, like the Chinese chicken salad instead of the wild mushroom pizza. And I can't even express how many people have tried to help me. How many people have told me to just take a deep breath and relax, to just speak slower and let the words come out. But having a stutter is like being stuck in the dressing room of a bridal store. When you're standing in the middle of those creepy 360 degree mirrors and you can't escape your own reflection. Just like how every awkward silence and confused gaze that occupies the air between me and my companion is just a reminder of a fate that I simply cannot escape. And I'm sorry that I can't tell you that I love you the way you deserve to hear it. Because it's frustrating when the world of your verbal communication has taken on the form of a library, forced into silence when there's so many things that I want to say. But having a stutter has also taught me not to be careless with my words, to be grateful for the things that I do say and to mean them. It has taught me to recognize how life can still knit and weave patterns of beauty, even with the loose threads and imperfections still visible. Thank you.